introduction of myself, right? Uh, my name is Ahmad Shafiq Aizat bin Muhammad, and uh, people call me Shafiq. Uh, so uh, I started my career as a software developer uh, with Hewlett Packard, and specifically uh, uh, under Shell account, right? And uh, before I moved to Petronas, uh, which is Petronas Digital, uh, I I moved. Uh, into multiple roles uh, from the developer lead uh, to uh, solution architect and also, and I am right now spearheading the DevOps uh, engineering team within the group digital uh, which look into um, the DevSecOps, uh, the infrastructure as code, continuous monitoring, configuration management and all DevOps related, right? right. So what I'm going to share to you today is basically uh, the DevOps journey within uh, Group Digital, um, uh, where we, uh, why we do the DevOps uh, and the trial tribulations in implementing the DevOps, uh, and also uh, what things that uh, uh, I want to do if uh, we can do it differently, right? And uh, maybe I. If I may ask, uh, anyone knows about Petronas here? Cool, not so bad. <laughs> All right. So basically, yeah, uh, we are a Malaysian national oil and gas company uh, with uh, the sixty k employees, uh, and we have about uh, three hundred uh, plus uh, sub subsidiaries, and Group Digital is one of it, right? So I just want to give you a sense of uh, what a monster IT shop that we are currently running here. Um, for me, it's quite large, uh, and and it could be uh, really tiny uh, compared to some of the enterprises here today. And uh, we support pretty much the entire group of Petronas, uh, uh, as I mentioned, almost uh, sixty thousand uh, employees. Uh, um, which consists of uh, multiple streams, uh, which is uh, corporates, upstream, downstream, uh, HSE, uh, PDNT, worldwide, right? And this is the size of estate that uh, our little team uh, is trying to DevOpsify uh, with 700 uh, plus ongoing projects, uh, all IT related, uh, including the cloud computing, the tech refresh, upgrades, cybersecurity, uh, application development, and we have about uh, 1,800 IT staff uh, with consists of developers, project managers, uh, service desk uh, until the enabler functions. And the 2,000 plus applications um, uh, that we develop in-house and some of them are uh, off the shelf. Um, we also have the legacy application as well that we have to ensure that the lights is always on. And uh, we have about 18,000 18, tickets a month uh, in terms of the incident tickets uh, that raised by the group to Group Digital. All right, so uh, just a little bit of narrative before uh, I move into the journey uh, that we have, right? So why we do DevOps uh, back in the day? Uh, we were in silo where development and operations uh, were way separated. And we deploy our application to production. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to deploy our application to production, we have to raise a request with a three days SLA. Um, so the operation have to pick it up and uh, there, there are queues that we have to actually wait for. So as, as you uh, could see previously, uh, we have about 2000 applications, right? So Imagine how massive the, the queues that we have to actually wait, right? So based on that queue, and sometimes they have missed the SLA as well. And of course, it impacted uh, our uh, delivery timeline, also the cost that will uh, actually uh, get the business uh, making noise to all of the, uh, our top management. And we also experienced during the big festive, for example, uh, Hari Raya or Chinese New Year. During that time, normally uh, the operation team have to entertain the emergency uh, request. For example, there is an issue or uh, emergency issues like that, that, that they need to actually uh, resolve. So basically, during their travel time, uh, they have to actually 
uh, stop by at the r and r or any restaurant to actually fix the issue um, because everything back then is, is is just manual right so so that's why uh, we want to do a quicker deployment cycle uh, uh, at the same time to increase in product quality, uh, faster innovation cycle, and also reduce uh, operation suspension as well. All right. So here is the snapshot of our journey in a nutshell. Uh, this is just the highlights. Uh, if I recall, uh, there was a lot of pain and hurdles uh, in between. Um, started uh, with a humble beginning in 2017 with a team of 20 people. Uh, and uh, the way that we do, uh, we do at that time, uh, we nominated five applications and then we sealed this application from any new improvement um, and isolate, isolated them from uh, the current processes, the red tapes and so on. So we make this five application as a, like a, a testing ground for any new technology or any new uh, tools that we're going to bring into Petronas, right? And um, yeah, of course, uh, we need the support from, from the top management as well and, and the top management give, give us the support and we managed to onboard the many applications during that time and uh, one of it, uh, was the Ethelsian's products, uh, the entire suits, which is uh, Jira, Bitbucket, Bamboo, uh, Confluence uh, during that 2017 and 2018, right? And uh, yeah, th there was an issue as well in terms of the license, uh, licensing model because uh, as you know, Petronas uh, is quite big. Uh, so in terms of the licensing, licensing uh, model that Ethelsian has at that time is not actually something that will meet uh, our criteria. So that's why uh, in 2019, we moved to Azure, um, Azure DevOps, right? And uh, we expand those uh, two chain uh, to the um, other application, other squads as well, right? And in 2020, we managed to onboard at least 97 products into DevOps and uh, yeah, we, we look into how we can actually expand and uh, uh, broaden the scopes uh, within DevOps, right? So we look into how we can implement the infrastructure as code um, within the organization as well, uh, and also uh, uh, expand our observability tool sets as well, right? And in 2021, um, we managed to onboard uh, further, which is we, we got into the 200 products onboarded, and also, we will look into how we can actually expand uh, the scope of the DevOps that we want to bring into Petronas. And we look into the introduction of the configuration management uh, and also, of course, refinement of the existing DevOps tool chain that we have. All right. And in 2022, uh, we strengthened uh, our cap capabilities uh, where we uh, launched our new Azure and AWS landing zone with uh, IAC enabled. Um, so we managed to, we, even we have, uh, I, I would say, uh, more than 1,000 uh, VMs within Petronas, right? but this one, we, we started with small, small uh, numbers. So we managed to provision uh, 27 cloud environments in Asia and 18 in AWS via AC, um, and also onboarded uh, 50 servers uh, uh, into the automated system patching. Um, um, uh, with the 463 VMs uh, uh, with the configuration management enabled, right? And in 2023 and 2024, we are going, uh, we are looking into how we can actually maturing our DevOps uh, and how we can actually improve uh, for this year, right? So this is how far uh, we have come, and this metric are a measure of success in themselves, uh, obviously. So basically, this is our annual, um, I would say, dashboard uh, that we track uh, in terms of our agile and DevOps on, uh, adoption, the DevSecOps onboarding, the configuration management uh, implementation, the IAC, 
uh, and also um, our our small team uh, of SRE, right? So we managed to onboard about uh, 449 products uh, since 2017 until now, um, and we have about 20.6 million of line of codes that has been scanned to uh, Sonar Cloud. Um, uh, hundred uh, more than 100 applications that we onboarded into DevSecOps where we actually uh, shift the security to the left uh, in, in 2021. And also, yeah, as, as I mentioned, uh, the numbers before on the configuration ma uh, management, right? And for until now, we onboarded about 159 applications uh, uh, for Azure and also 80 in AWS for the IAC new IAC landing zone that we have. All right. But all of this still not even halfway. Uh, we still have a, a very long journey uh, forward, right? And we have come to uh, our DevOps tool chain that we have uh, in our current landscape. So just to level set uh, that towards the end of 2020, we had fully automated uh, CICD pipelines with close of 200 products uh, already inboarded uh, to this way of working. Right. So as you can see, uh, starting from the plan until monitoring, uh, these are the tool chains that we have right now, um, where the main orchestration tool that we are currently using is the Azure DevOps. Um, so that's why you can see uh, most of the uh, uh, Azure DevOps uh, features are in the plan collaboration, uh, the uh, inside the CICD uh, pipeline as well, right? Um, so yeah, from, from the code, uh, we are using Azure repos, and then uh, for the code quality and software composition analytic, analytics is using uh, Sonar Cloud and also Sonar Type just now. Uh, I, I forgot to put Sonar Type. And then uh, Jamie presented just now, I just, I just remind, oh shit, I forgot to put in, <laughs> right? So, um, in the build CI/CD, um, uh, we have a uh, unit uh, for the unit testing. Uh, Catalon as uh, uh, our main uh, automated testing tool, uh, Lambda test for mobile application and also App Center, Visual Studio App Center. Um, we are using Fortify right now for the uh, security uh, automated security scanning uh, for Dust and also SaaS. Um, for the release uh, CD, we are using uh, yeah, Azure Pipelines uh, where we hooked up to the Terraform as our IAC uh, platform tool and also Ansible for the configuration management. And we de deploy our application uh, to uh, multiple environments as well, uh, which is currently we are on hybrid uh, AWS and also Azure. And uh, App Center and Intune for the mobile application distribution um, and in terms of the monitoring, uh, we do have all the native uh, monitoring in, in place, but uh, we want to have a single uh, place, a single dashboard for us to actually uh, go through. Okay. Um, so, so all of those uh, uh, logs is, is, is basically to uh, push, has been pushed to either Denatrace or Elastic. Uh, so why then I trace all elastics is because based on our uh, uh, enterprise architecture, that is the, the direction that um, the critical and severe application will go to Dynatrace and those are not critical and severe is to elastic, right? So yeah, the reason behind that is because of the expensive license and blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Yeah, I think uh, we have reached uh, to the end of my sharing today. Uh, I, I have another three minutes. Um, if I look back, even even though we have implemented DevOps for a few years now, um, I can still I, I can see still that development and ops are separated divisions in IT uh, during 2019. Uh, sorry, 2017 2019. Right, but um, if I'm very honest, uh, we set up uh, the original DevOps. 
tooling and methodologies as a means of to remove our dependencies on ops, not deepen our relationship with them, right? But in 2020, where we started to implement the infrastructure as code, the IAC, and also configuration management, where we actually deepen our relationship with the operation team. So we, from, from speaking once a month with them, uh, we go into speaking every day or every hours together with them to make sure that our IAC landing zone, everything is up, right? So if you can do, if, if, I, want see, if I want to look, keep, uh, looking back, uh, how we want to improve is something that we, we need to do it uh, earlier compared to the, uh, the time that we, we started to do this uh, IAC in 2020. So maybe we can do it uh, during the initiation, uh, initiation of the DevOps uh, practices that we kicked off in 2000, uh, 2017, all right? So yeah, I think that's all from me today. Thank you for your, uh, for your patience. Um,